Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkle. She's actually very, very busy this morning working on Disney stories. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on with Disney and theme park news, and she's busy over at piratesandprincesses.net handling that. I think we'll be doing a video later today talking about what's going on at Disney, but I wanted to do a video talking about Anime Log. Anime Log is the Japanese-owned, Japanese studio-run anime streaming service, and it's up and running now on YouTube. Now, I gotta hope, hope that at some point they will get an app and maybe they can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with companies like Crunchyroll and, and Funimation here in the States because, you know, we've been following the situation with anime, and one of the big problems with it is we have a lot of uh, Western interference. I guess I'm going to call it that. Western interference in the Japanese anime industry that is leading to some really subpar stuff like uh, what we're seeing from Crunchyroll, the Crunchyroll originals. Uh, not too hot. X-Arm looks like trash. Um, High Guardian Spice is missing. Now their Webtoon series have, have done pretty well. I guess, but of course, you know, they've got Webtoon kind of looking over their shoulder. So I don't know, guys, but um, let's go back and talk a little bit about Anime Log and why I think it's uh, important because anime streaming services are going to become incredibly important. In fact, uh, Crunchyroll at this point, uh, which is so ironic, Crunchyroll actually is announcing the launch of Anime Log. <laughs> you know? But Crunchyroll itself is supposedly being sold off to Sony for close to a billion dollars. We've heard much less than that, uh, actually, but we, we've been talking about, you know, how much Netflix has been putting into anime, and, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing other uh, companies, HBO Max doing more animation, uh, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Anime Log is owned by or co-owned by several Japanese studios. Toy Animation, Kodansha, and other anime content providers have banded together to start a channel on YouTube, which is now live, and we'll go out and check it out. Um, the goal is to have 30 companies providing 3,000 anime titles by 2022, with the number of views per month reaching 300 million. Called Anime Log or Analog, the channel was launched Friday. Now, this is uh, this is a couple of months ago, so it actually is is live here in the U.S. now. Um, by uh, Analyze Log, a company that supports corporate digital strategies, the target audience for the channel is currently local, while it's now available in the U.S. too, uh, in English-speaking countries. But there are also plans to add subtitle content in English and Chinese. Uh, so, yeah, here it is. As of the 12th of November, good news for you. Today, we started streaming overseas on Anime Log. We'll continue to deliver more Japanese anime in the future. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, I guess that looks like Yitch. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, we can deliver more anime. Let's grow Anime Log together. Thank you. If you go out to YouTube, there it is. Um, we've got Anime Log has 291,000 subs. Let's refresh this. Yep, still at... Still at 291,000 subs, but uh, they do have the Anne of Green Gables prequel on here. They've got New Jungle Emperor Leo on here. Let's see what all they have. Um, not a whole lot of content yet, but give them time. I mean, they're talking 3,000 titles from multiple studios by 2022. Now, this sort of this sort of uh, is interesting that Crunchyroll is is announcing it. Uh, you do realize Crunchyroll that this is Japan's attempt to replace you. They're just getting started, but eventually they want to cut out the middleman. I think because we are seeing a lot of the drama and the problems and the censorship and all of this other nonsense going on, you know, at companies like Crunchyroll and Funimation and uh, you know even Netflix to some degree. And I have to wonder if the Japanese studios aren't getting together and they're like, why do we even need a Western company to get involved at all? Why, why do we need them? We don't need them. They, they did, you know, decades ago when they had to distribute physical media, but now that everything is mostly digital, these Japanese companies do not need a third party to distribute or translate their content. So I think this is a step in 
the right direction, I think, for anime fans because you know you're getting unfiltered content directly from Japan. But I also think it is the beginning of the end for some niche anime streamers. And there are a lot of them. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, coming from Crunchyroll's news site, Anime Log YouTube channel launches overseas distribution. Officially licensed international streams include Jungle Emperor Leo, Fantastic Children, and more. We have uh, Anne before Green Gables. I've actually never seen this one. Now, we actually do have um, we do have on DVD the uh, Anne of Green Gables it was a uh, Miyazaki. We have that version, but uh, I've never seen this one before. So Jungle Emperor Leo, Fantastic Children, The World of Golden Eggs, Hungry Heart, Wild Striker, and Aware. Now these are probably all titles that are not licensed here in the U.S. Anime Log features licensing agreements with media companies such as Kodansha and Toei. The channel launched in Japan on August 7th and features some 289,000 subs approximately half of which are international anime fans. The channel currently plans to distribute more than 100 anime titles within the next year. I think there will be more than that. I really have to wonder. Now, obviously, Crunchyroll and Funimation will carry the Sony stuff, the Aniplex stuff, but I really have to wonder if more studios won't just bypass them uh, completely. You know, I would. I'd just be like, why do we need you? You know, you guys are... Causing more problems. Let's translate this. Yeah, they have this out on Anime Anime Japan uh, talking about. It. So, I mean, look, this is this is a small start. But, you know, 3,000 titles by the beginning of 2022, you can't ignore that. Now, this was put out in uh, Ico Today magazine talking about all the streaming apps, the anime streaming apps, and the status of the anime streaming apps after covid uh, so we've got Anime Bay, Billy Billy, Kitsu, Tubi. Yeah, people forget Tubi actually has anime on it. Anime Lab, Amino, uh, Naruto. Naruto has his own app. Crunchyroll, Aniplex, Funimation, Netflix, and Amazon Prime Video are the leaders. Uh, one I want to bring up again, because I freaking love this. This is currently my favorite anime streaming service right now is Retro Crush. And you can get the app for free. You can watch a lot of 80s and 90s anime, early 2000s anime for free with ads. I uh, love this service. We've been following it for several months now. But it does, to me, it feels like going to a blockbuster video in the mid-90s. You know, here we got Project Aiko, uh, Kite, and all these other Samurai Pizza Cats. I love this because this is, this is what got me into anime. You know, this is these are the titles that really got me in anime. Running, running them on VHS, uh, DVD back in the day uh, from uh, you know Blockbuster and and uh, Hollywood Video and all these other you know video stores. Uh, so I love this uh, very much. Go to RetroCrush.tv and you can check it out. But yeah, I think ultimately what is going to happen is Japan is going to get tired of the West's shit, basically. And they're just going to start bringing the titles out themselves. Now, if Sony does get a hold of Crunchyroll and Funimation, you know, they're kind of cutting out the middleman at that point anyway. You know, but all these other studios, and there's some pretty big studios. I mean, Toy, can you imagine if a Toy decided that they're just going to be like, yeah, we're not even going to mess with a third party. We're just releasing all of our stuff ourselves uh, on YouTube or on an app or something, and we're cutting out the West completely. That might be the only way that we actually get, you know, uncensored, unfiltered, you know, anime content. You know, Crunchyroll is trying, you know, they're trying to do original content. Uh, we saw this the other day on Comic Book Resources, and they're basically echoing a lot of things we've said on this channel about Crunchyroll originals. And uh, High Guardian Spice has gone missing. Now, the people that have seen it, that have come to us, they've seen the pilot. They actually said the animation is not bad. It's not terrible, but I don't think it tested very well. And it's being buried for now, probably until after the acquisition. If I had to guess, I, I don't know for sure. But if I had to guess. Um, but they're talking about how awful, how awful the uh, Crunchyroll originals have been, say, for the Webtoon you know, series. And they're also bringing up that Crunchyroll's lacking in diversity. And this was... Um, this is actually talking about Astro's Rebellion, which we covered in a video. And, um, you know, man, yeah, it, it, Crunchyroll basically turned it down, as I understand it, because of the fact that it wasn't 
Um, they were afraid of diversity now because High Guardian Spice didn't test very well, but they have Onyx Equinox coming out. You know, but again, this is you know Western Western animation that looks sort of vaguely anime-ish. It's not actually anime, and you know we've seen that with Crunchyroll's general manager. We did uh, you know a video on that a few days ago that she's basically whispering in the studio's ears and saying do this and do that to appeal to a Western audience. And I don't think Japan is actually getting the full picture because most anime fans don't want watered down, censored. Uh, politically correct anime. That's not why we import anime. If we wanted that, we'd just watch Car Cartoon Network. And, you know, I think they are starting to figure this out. I think this is why they're going to start bringing more and more series out themselves. And uh, I, I do have a little bit of hope then that it's not going to be totally ruined by uh, the West and uh, especially uh, Hollywood types with political agendas. I think there is a way for Japan to get the stuff out to whoever wants to watch it on their own terms. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with Analog. Uh, you know, again, check them out on YouTube. I'm gonna wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, and we'll be back later.